Okay, to finish this off, we're going to go over uh, some pro tips on how to get better at this game and some stuff to watch out for. <clears throat> okay, now one important thing to remember about Battlefield is that there's no Rambos here, okay? Express common courtesy. The players here are really nice people. They're not assholes like they are in Call of Duty. Sure, these guys can be tough to beat, but they are actually really nice and they will help you out no matter what. If someone wants a tank or a truck and they get it first, let them have it. Don't fight over it. Don't complain. Just let them have it because they got to learn too. And you know what? They might be better at it than you are. And that's going to help in the battle and make things much more enjoyable. You'll get your chance to have a tank. Don't worry about it. Or a plane or a horse or whatever. You will get your shot. Okay? So don't fight over it. Another thing to remember also is uh, back to the squad thing, follow your squad. Okay, if you get into a squad, follow those guys, okay? Stick with them. And you know what? If you if you see an opening or something like that, lead by example. They will follow you if you know what you're doing. Okay? And furthermore, a lot of people tell you to use voice communication in these games. I recommend you don't because you don't need it. Maybe it's because you got something like this, but you've hold down the right bumper on this. You can easily pick different commands to talk to. Give squad orders and stuff like that. That's why I'm not showing up because I got a lot of squad members in here. Okay. And it's not necessarily fast, but it does help when you need to say something exactly. So it does help. Also, remember to spot players too. Uh, you can spot your enemy team members easily by, just by pushing the right bumper on your stick. It's not going to work now because you know, there's, there's no one else in here, but it does help. When you spot other team members out there, you get a bonus for spotting them if they get taken out. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you see a sniper or if you see another guy on the distance, just pull up your weapon like this, push the right bumper, and just spot them. If you do that, it helps a lot because then your team members can see where that guy is at and they can take him out much more effectively. If you don't do that, people are going to wonder what the hell you're shooting at. Okay, because like I said earlier, these maps are big, so you're going to have to learn to see from really far away, and you're going to have to learn to spot things, which really helps. Okay, another pro tip. This is something that a lot of professional players I talk to online about this, and this is something that they've addressed about this. Battlefield 1's got a new mode in here, and it's called Field of View. Now, this has been common with a lot of classic shooters back in the day, and we used to use this setting a lot. It was hidden in most uh, games like Unreal Tournament and Quake the Arena, but you can still set it up your own way. Here, they included it right in the game, here in the, name, here in the, here, here in the options menu, so you can actually set it up the way you want. If you're going to pl play around with this, set it to 74. Now, the reason why you do this... Go back... It's because it gives you more of a wider angle for you to see, so you can see people off the, off the corner of your eyes more easily. Uh, a lot of players use this because it makes things a lot easier to see. It does pull the view angle back a little bit, but if you got a clear HDTV, you can see just fine, no problem. Now, if you pull it back too much, which I'm going to show off right now, which you don't want to do, but if you pull it back way too much like that, the game turns into fisheye lens. And I don't recommend this, but if you want to try it, go ahead. But like I said earlier, a lot of pro players, they don't even like this setting. They go for 74, not 105. Okay, so if you want to try doing that, you can. It's up to you. Because again, it pulls the camera back so you can see more on the sides of your character. So that you can see uh, any enemies coming from the side of the corner of your eye. And you can turn and get them much more quickly. I'm going to set it back to normal because I, I, I like it on standard. That's just me. There we go. Let me see. I think of another tip I can give you guys. Common courtesy, follow your squad, field of view thing. Oh yeah, another tip also. When you're focusing on the main game, if one team has captured an objective, or, or teams captured like certain objectives in the map, one thing that will happen in here is that you'll get into some major firefights where two teams, like your team and the other team, are just basically fighting over one spot. And you'll see that happen from time to time in matches. If you see that happen, my best advice, don't get involved in the firefight. 
Look at one of the bases that the enemy team is not guarding and go over and take that over. What this will do is it will draw their attention away because they'll want to go back and get that base again. And it will it'll loosen things up between them and you give your team a good hole to get through so that we can take that team out and get to the next objective. It sounds complicated, but trust me, when you focus on other points other than the ones you need to focus on, it does help. Plus, back to the squad mechanic again. If you get with a good squad leader, or if you are the squad leader, make sure you mark your targets. They will be right above the pole right here. Mark them with, with, with our green arrows. It's really good to set up. If you, if you mark them, you get a bonus for getting that objective. Okay? So, keep that in mind when you're setting up, and always look for that. And again, any big firefights going on on one objective, go for objectives that no one's going after. If you go after those, it'll split things up, and it'll uh, divide the enemy team a bit more so that you can get, give your team a hole to, hole to get through. I know it sounds complicated the way I say it, but trust me, it makes perfect sense when you do it in-game. Okay, so now I only got one warning here, and this is something I want to tell you guys right now. You may have noticed that I was using the redeployment option a lot. Well, that's only because I need to die and get out of here so I can uh, show you stuff around here. This gets abused a lot in the main game, and I'm going to show you guys how it is. So let me use it real quick. See, what people will do, and I'm not encouraging this at all, I'm just letting you guys know what happens, because... There's going to be times you're going to get stressed out wondering how how the enemy team get there so fast and why am I getting hit so hard. What happens is this. When you take over a base, you could spawn on that base. Okay? But here's what happens. And this has been a problem with the last two Battlefield games also, and I can believe it's still in here. And it hasn't even been fixed yet. They, they fixed the other problem, which was uh, teammates spamming on each other to, you know... One guy gets hit, you know, the four guys spam on him, and all of a sudden, oh, they take out the guy who's standing in front of him. They fixed that for the most part. Thank God they did. But they didn't fix the, the base spawn mechanic, which unfortunately is still a problem in the game. So here's what will happen. Uh, if you're trying to take over one of the enemy bases, nine times out of ten, what that team will do is that they will go for the redeploy option, come back here, select that base, wait for the timer to go out, and they will spawn on that base before it gets caught. And then they will show up there, they will spam it, and then they will just barrage like no tomorrow. And it happens so often, it's not even funny. And like I said earlier, a lot of bad teams use this type strategy. I don't recommend using this strategy for one reason. And here's, the, and here's the main reason. When you do that, you're spending more time in menus. And the menu is glitchy. It's always It's got a delay to it. Same with the other games too. It's, it's not 100%. But sometimes the menu, the timer goes on a little longer than it's supposed to. Longer than it takes to get back to the base. Your best option, if someone's taking over a base, just run back to the base. And there's a very good reason why you want to do that. You see, if you lose a base, it's not that big of a deal. Let me get back and find my way around here real quick. If you lose a base, it's no big deal. Okay? You lose that base. So what? If you let them capture the base first, or at least neutralize it, when you get back here and recapture that, and take those guys out, you will get bonus points for taking that base over again. So you get a higher score. That's what you want. Okay? When you use the other mechanics, just take it back over right away without even letting it uh, neutralize, you get nothing for that. You might get a little base defense for it, but it's a very low score. You don't even want to bother doing that. And again, it also breaks the game quite a bit, and a lot of Call of Duty players do that in this just to get a leg up on everyone else. It's not exactly fair, it's in the game, but just, just don't bother with that mechanic. You know, because it really does break the game, breaks the immersion, and you don't have a whole lot of fun using it anyway. Sure, it might help you win a match, but perfectly honest, it actually doesn't. I've seen so many teams lose matches because of that mechanic, because I know how to beat them. It's really not that hard. You know, especially when you run there, you take them out, and take back over the base again. It makes them look like idiots for even spawning back there in the first place. Because then guess what? They got to go back here. They got to redeploy again. Then they go back to the menu, and then they got to wait for the timer to go out, and then go back over to the base again, and just spawn back over there. Some teams are so stupid, 
and they'll do it from like 20 feet away. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's how stupid they are, and that's why I don't want you to abuse that mechanic. And again, just a heads up, let you know that when you take over, when, you take, when you're taking over a base and players just show up there all of a sudden, that's what they're doing. They're hitting the redeploy option, they're going back here, waiting for the timer to go out, and then they go back on that base. And I urge you not to use that mechanic. For the love of God, don't. It's not even worth it. Let them take the base over if they got to, and just run over there and take them out. Chances are, one of your teammates will be on the way over there anyway, so you might as well just spawn on them, get a bonus for that, and then take that base over again and get another bonus for that. Trust me, it's worth it a lot more. Another thing I want to also address here real quick. Your kill-death ratio doesn't mean jack shit in this game. Yes, it doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Okay, A lot of people still think it does. No, it does not. In fact, it doesn't mean anything at all, to be honest with you. Your kill-death ratio is just minor bragging rights, really. That's all it is. It's, it's nothing. Your score is the number one thing you want to focus on with this game. Forget your kill-death ratio. Don't worry if you die a lot, okay? It's no big deal. That's half the fun, actually. Focus on your score. Again, the more stuff you do in here, you don't just have to shoot people. You can just heal people, refill ammo, Take over bases over and over again. If someone takes over a base, who gives a shit? Just go back over there and take it back. Make them look like idiots. You know? And do it the right way. If you do, I swear to God, your score will be so high, you'll be number one leaderboard every single time. Top three at least. That's what happened to me for so many years. I used to be awesome. You know, and I'm, I'm getting back into the fray again. But that's what you want to focus on. Don't worry about your kill-death ratio. Care about your score and care about helping out your teammates. The more you do, the better you'll do in the match. And plus, don't worry if you lose a match. Okay? You'd be lucky if you even win half your matches in this game because it's 64 players. Okay? It's 32 on 32. Okay? It's not 6 on 6 where you can easily figure it out between 6 guys. It's 32 guys. You're not going to figure it out between all those guys. The only thing you can do, maybe, is just hopefully influence them to go in a certain direction, but even then, don't worry about that. Just worry about having a good time, getting a high score, and having a, and just, just having fun overall. And yes, you're going to have bad matches here and there. Don't freak out. Okay? If you're you're going to have those bad matches where your team's not going to know a goddamn thing. You're going to be screwing around the whole time. Like I had a match uh, just the other day where I was on the ballroom blitz map, and there were literally two armored tanks on that map for the other team, just two of them, and no one knew how to take those fucking things out. I was, I was staring at them wondering, what the hell are you guys doing? And I was the only guy even trying to take them out. I took one out with the Zeppelin that showed up, thank God, and then I took the other one out on the ground because I know how to do it. But stuff like that's going to happen from time to time. Don't get frustrated. It's just going to happen, okay? And, of course, again... Express common courtesy. Don't take it seriously. It's just Battlefield. This isn't a big deal. Okay, it's just online gaming. Don't worry about your score. Don't worry about your KD. Don't worry about any other horse shit. Okay, just go in there, have fun, try to get a good score, and that's it. And with that being said, hope you all enjoyed this video, and you all take care.